So in the topic of coastal navigation today, let's talk about position determination on ships. We'll primarily focus on the use of position lines and position circles to plot the position of the ship at sea. So a position line is a locus of all position possible positions of the vessel and position lines can be derived from terrestrial observations or it can be derived from celestial observations or electronic aids to navigation. In this presentation today, we'll examine how position lines are obtained from terrestrial observations. All right, we've discussed celestial observations before. So let's start from position lines from terrestrial observations. So we'll start with visual bearings and visual bearings can be obtained by using the gyro compass, which gives us the true bearing and the ship's magnetic compass that gives us the compass bearing. So because the ship's magnetic compass is also influenced by the ship's structures in the cargo on board, we do not call it compass bearings. Uh, we do not call it a magnetic compass bearings. We basically call it a compass bearings. All right. Uh, electronic means of position fixing involves use of the ship's radar and the echo sounder, as I'll show you in the subsequent slides. So we'll, if we talk about visual bearings using the gyro compass bearings, uh, in this case, for example, you can see that the bearing of the lighthouse is obtained using the gyro compass. Now, since the gyro error, let's assume the gyro error in, is zero in this case, the gyro knot will coincide with the true knot, and thus the bearing obtained of the lighthouse becomes the true bearing. Uh, in this case, you can see the bearing is about 345 degrees. So with the bearing of the lighthouse obtained as say 345 degrees, we know that we are somewhere along the line of the bearing looking towards the lighthouse. All right. So to plot the position line on the chart, we lay off a line of bearing in this case is 345 degrees true leading towards the symbol of the lighthouse. All right. So note that the arrowhead on this position line points away from the lighthouse as we are somewhere along the line away from the lighthouse. All right. Uh, in the previous case, avoid making the mistake of plotting the position line in the wrong direction. And because you have to remember the compass is on the vessel and we are looking out towards the lighthouse. If the bearing observed was taken of the magnetic compass, the compass bearing obtained uh, should have been converted to true to be plotted as a position line on the chart. Now let's talk about transit bearings. Now two objects are described as being observed in transit when they can be seen in a direct line with each other. As you can see in the picture below on the chart. Because we can align a ruler on the chart between the objects, a line can be drawn on a chart. Thus, we can uh, effectively use this line of transit as a position line. The use of transits as leading marks or stern marks is really convenient to the navigator, especially when running in for an anchorage, pilotage in confined waters and approaches to harbor where more frequent position determination is required. It's also a powerful, powerful method of determining your gyro or magnetic compass error. All right. Because you can uh, obtain the true bearing or true transit bearing from the chart, and then you can compare it with the transit bearing that you observe using the gyro compass. You can compare the two bearings and obtain the gyro error if it's not very clear to you. All right. So I'll keep going uh, and I will use the next slide. So here we'll talk about the radar ranges and radar bearings from terrestrial observations using the radar. So in this case, uh, the north up setting of the radar gives us gyro stabilized and the, the relative ship's head up gives us relative bearings. So this is you have to be very careful of whether you are getting relative bearings or true bearings because it depends on the setting of the radar that you've put your uh, radar on. All right. So if we talk about uh, so a position line can also be obtained and drawn on to a chart if you can determine the distance you are from the charted object. So the distance can be determined by the radar uh, as well as rising or dipping ranges of lights. We'll talk about that as well. A position circle is drawn onto a chart using a set of compasses. The distance is measured off against the latitude scale. The pivot of the compasses is then placed over the object and an arc is scribed from the object. Then the vessel is somewhere on that position circle or the arc of the position circle. In terms of radar ranges on the radar, you can obtain the range of a charted object detected and use it as a position line. 
since this position line is a range it should be marked off on the chart as an arc or a circle around the object using a pair of compasses as i have shown you here right so you can compare the uh, what you could see on the radar screen on your right side and as well as what you plot on the chart on your left side all right then we talk about the line of soundings and in this line of soundings uh, we talk about the depth contours so you can see the depth contours on charts are lines drawn joining places of equal depth as you can see the 5 10 and 20 uh, is basically lines joining uh, places of equal depth uh, navigators should be wary about using these depth contours as a means of position determination as these are not intended for use as position lines however soundings give useful indications on the general position of the vessel of the coast and proximity to hazards especially when other charted coastal features are scarce so the depth indicated on the chart is a charted depth or the depth of water at chart datum the depth given on the echo sounder is the distance between the transducer and the sea bottom so the depth has to be collected for the depth of the transducer and height of tide to obtain the charted depth all right so i'll show you with an example so here the sounding uh, obtained from the echo sounder is 3.7 so let's see in this example here the vessel will make an approach towards the shallow bank with limited charted features all right here we are using the 5 meter depth contour as an indication of our general location and to obtain some form of a position line when the echo sounder indicates a sounding of 3.7 meters we know we are on the 5 meter depth contour i'll show you why it is so all right so this is uh, ideally you will be looking for a 5 meter sounding reading but what happens here is that uh, that uh, you can see this 5 meters is the depth contour as a charted depth right uh, the 0 0.8 meters is the height of tide that you can obtain from tide tables for example all right so then the available depth of water becomes 5.8 meters if you add the 5 meter and 0.8 meters all right now let's assume that the ship's draft in this case is about 2.1 meters that would be the height of the water from the water level to the keel so that will be about ship's draft will be about 2.1 meters right in that case 5.8 minus 2.1 will be 3.7 meters will be the under keel clearance all right so that's why i said if you see 3.7 meters on the under keel clearance on the echo sounder that is the sounding you must look out for on the echo sounder so you consider the depth of the water or the charted depth plus the uh, height of tide from the tide tables that gives you the, the total depth of water and then subtract the draft or ship's draft from it and you get the under clearance sounding that you will obtain from the echo sounder all right so as soon as you see that you know you can get some kind of a position line which will provide you with some indication of where your ship is now uh, especially this is used this method is used especially in those cases when the availability of other objects uh, terrestrial objects are scarce all right then we talk about simultaneous observations so simultaneous observations uh, are obtaining position lines simultaneously so when several simultaneous observations are made and the corresponding position lines are plotted together on the chart we say that we have determined our position by a fixing so a position fix is the intersection of a minimum of two or more position lines derived at the same time all right so uh, two is good uh, two or more will be better so the symbol for a fix is an encircled dot that you can see here uh, this is a standard symbol and sh should not uh, use this for anything else on the chart since the fix represents the determined position of the vessel for a particular time the symbol for a fix must always be accompanied with a time using the 24 hour clock as you saw before as well as here in terms of number of position lines now although you need a minimum of two position lines for a fix you should always endeavor to obtain a third for a greater degree of uh, certainty because two position lines can intersect anywhere and should there be an error present in either or both of them it might pass undetected 
So with the third position line, we are alerted that some error is present when all three position lines do not intersect at one place. I'll show you, I'll show you the example of that later on in the slide as well. All right. So along a course, you may find many charted objects to choose from for the purpose of position fixing wherever possible attempt to select a combination of these objects in such a manner that the resulting position lines tend to intersect each other at broad angles. And this tends to increase the reliability of the fix. I'll show you with an example. So we're talking about fixed reliability here because sometimes what we say a cogged hat is caused by identification errors or time delays or plotting errors as well as instrument errors. All right, so that's why it's a good idea for us to use more than two or three position lines located at a, a, a wide angle so, to, so that the fix is reliable. So the accuracy of your fix can be influenced by uh, errors in obtaining position lines by the navigator or time delays in between obtaining each position line or instrument errors, uh, errors in measuring and drawing or laying off position lines, choice of objects used for the fix and angle of intersection or cut of the position lines. All right. In such cases, you make sure that you recheck and replot fix. However, if you keep getting cocked hat, I'll show you what happens then and what you do. You always place the ship at the closest corner to the danger. So here you can see there are three position lines uh, from objects which are widely located. So when you obtain position lines from objects which are widely located, you can see in this case, of course, they are intersecting at a very good angle and they're all intersecting at the same position. Uh, in that case, your fix is, uh, this is a good uh, and this is a reliable fixing and uh, we call it a good angle of cut, all right? But sometimes when you get a cogged hat, uh, now normally cogged hats are resolved by finding the center of the triangle, the centroid of the triangle. But in terms of coastal navigation, you always resolve a cogged hat by placing the vessel closest to the nearest navigational danger that's how you resolve it, all right? Because when at least three position lines are plotted, um, uh, these kind of errors can occur, especially if the objects are not widely uh, located. All right, so in, when I was a cadet, my captain used to tell me that I must locate it at least 45 degrees apart. All right, so you can see here that if you do that, you can see that of the cut sometimes becomes really poor because of which this is called a bad angle of cut. And here the three position lines are not intersecting at the same point due to which there can be some frequency in position fixing. In this case, always place your vessel closest to the nearest danger so that uh, you have some uh, on, your, um, in, on your hands. All right, so small cog cocked hats are common and it can be expected in most instances. So don't be alarmed on the ship if you get that because on the ship sometimes it's not always possible to get the required bearing from objects which are absolutely perfectly placed. All right, so it's quite possible that you get cocked at. Don't get alarmed. Just make sure that uh, you recheck the position as quickly as possible, especially when you are engaging in coastal navigation. Keep rechecking positions uh, every five minutes or lesser intervals to make sure that you are absolutely uh, sure about the position of the vessel. So. Uh, uh, we'll uh, stop here today and I hope this video was useful for your learning. Let me know if you have any questions about this video or if you want to, me to cover some other topics. Uh, I'm putting up uh, different kind of topics. I'm getting a lot of requests from the subscribers and I appreciate it a lot. Uh, thank you for writing. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. I'll try to put up all those videos in the due course of time. See you soon. Bye guys.